Hi folks, uh, today I have a uh, Commando Lock IC3 Tactical. It's got this uh, very solid, feels like a steel shroud on it. Uh, very solid uh, laminated body and uh, very cool interlocking plate design there that we can go over in a minute. Uh, one little quibble I have with this lock because there are a ton of great features about it. Uh, it's chock full of security pins. It is uh, very highly rated for uh, its ability to, to withstand all manner of attacks. Uh, and Commando Lock has put a lot of effort into cooperating with the Locksport community for testing its products. The one problem I have though is when I uh, unlock the shackle, there we go. I don't have a, I still, if this was locked up to a gate or a chain or something, I don't have a way to get that off the gate or the chain or whatever it is. So it ends up what I have to do is I have to pull this up, turn it 180 degrees, then uh, the iChain shackle system, that's what this is called, uh, comes into play because I can turn the key uh, back counterclockwise and I can just pull the entire sleeve off, then remove the shackle from whatever it is, and then lock it back up. So a little bit inconvenient if you're in a hurry, but uh, it, this thing really will make it very difficult for someone to cut this shackle uh, or get in there with bolt cutters or whatever. Um, also, the keyway is this uh, nice scaled down Yale style keyway. Uh, the key bows are pretty cool looking and reference a lot of their uh, sort of trademark design elements. Uh, Let's see if we can actually get this thing open without the keys. They do boast that there may be up to 10 security pins in here. Uh, by which I mean, I'm assuming, a lot of serrated and spool pins. So, get ourselves set up in there. This is a unusually thin Peterson pry bar. I think it's 25 or 30 thousandths uh, of an inch thick and our 18 thousandths short hook because this is a fairly hair-centric keyway. I'm going to start, uh, just give pin one a couple of taps and we get a few clicks and let's see if anything else is binding up now. Getting a bit of binding on four, I'll click out of that, move back, pin one is binding still gives us a little bit of feedback, so... Okay, now pin 2. We're developing a little bit of a false set. Still nothing from pin 3. Pin 4 gives us another click. Pin 5 is still just floating there. Uh, that was pin 2 again. Anything else now, so I'm going to just release a little bit, reset partially. Okay, so clicks from pin one, click from pin two, nothing from pin three, four, five. So, pin one, tiny bit of counter rotation. And now we're in a reasonably deep fall set. A bunch of clicks off of pin 2. I'm really hoping I didn't overset that on a serrated pin. Pin 3 is going very stiff, but I'm not getting a little counter rotation. Okay, I got a little bit of a click out of it. Uh, 4 and 5, nothing. Set. Pin 2 is okay, pin 3, a little bit of movement, tiny bit. 
bit of counter rotation. Lots of clicks. Bit of resistance from four. Nothing from five. I'm just having the worst time trying to get this down on camera. One more time, we'll reset. Very solid click from one, nothing from two, nothing from three. There's a click from three actually. Number four has now put us into a fairly deep false set. Number five gave us a little click there. Let's go back to the front. Number two. Ah, and there we go. So we got lucky that time. I found that because of the number of serrated pins and spool pins in here, it's very changeable uh, which ones, uh, what the exact binding order is going to end up being. But, uh, let's see if we can get a look in there. You can see by the shape of the shackle that uh, this does have a ball bearing locking mechanism. And hopefully you can just make out in there. The ball bearing sitting in there, very, very heavily greased. Uh, now that we actually have this, it is technically possible for us to then pick back to the shackle removal position. Uh, but, actually, let's see, we're, we're only six minutes in here. Let's see if we can do that. Part of the trick is that uh, you have to hold the shackle at exactly the right position in order to uh, get this to work. Otherwise, it does not let you uh, remove the shackle. And so we've got threes binding on us a bit kind of a hard way to hold it. We'll click from five. Back to the front, see if we've got any positions here. Three again. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, that was two, giving us a very deep click and a bit of counter rotation. Now maybe one is finally ready, and there we go. And the shackle's off. So, pretty good, very tricky uh, to pick, not impossible, but uh, for a lock that costs as much as it does, uh, I'm not expecting a Medico or a, an Abloid Protec. But this is overall a very solid lock, and they do offer versions in full brass if you're uh, someone who needs that extra rust resistance and all that. And just a great design overall, and a very nice company to deal with. So, uh, we're just under 10 minutes. Seriously, if you have the chance, drop the $25 or whatever it is that uh, this will run you and uh, you know always use this before you use a master lock. Till next time, have fun, happy picking, and uh, see you soon.